the roof is open here at Wembley this afternoon in contrast to one or two of the finals that were played at Cardiff but the noise level is really something to behold inside the stadium Ladies and gentlemen, the teams will now be presented to today's chief guests. They are Lord Norwoody, Chairman of the Football League, and Mr. Mark Hunter, Chief Executive Officer for Carling. Lord Norwoody renews acquaintance with the Chelsea players, who he welcomed 12 months ago, of course, to the Cardiff final, which ended actually with John Terry in hospital but then miraculously making it back for the celebration party. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to enjoy life, doesn't he? No, I mean, it, was, it looked a horrendous injury at the time, but John being John, who makes things like that seem, seem that they're nothing. And in fact, was actually back in the dressing room, I think, by the time they came off the pitch celebrating. And a first and a great high moment in the career of Avram Grant, his first Wembley final, having been such a lifelong admirer of English football and student of it too. The party makes its way over to Ledley King, a man not expected to be here today, and maybe he doubted his own ability to recover in time, but he has made it for Tottenham. An absolutely huge boost, no doubt, to all the Tottenham supporters. And right of screen, Juan de Ramos, very businesslike, very determined, no doubt, that he continues this incredible run of success in cup football at the first opportunity in England. What a job Lord Mawinney and his team have done in promoting the game across all the four professional divisions, Ladies not just at the top level, and this is their showpiece occasion. For the singing of the national anthem, led for us this afternoon by Natasha Marsh. She's getting a very big hand for an Arsenal fan. Chelsea feel they're at home today. 11 major finals over the last nine years. That's the record that Avram Grant intends to extend this afternoon. Let's take a check on the teams then for you. Ledley King, the man in shot there, a huge boost, as I mentioned, for Tottenham Hotspur. Ironically enough, the Ramos revolution started with Spurs' fourth-round victory over Blackpool. It was his first game in charge. Paul Robinson is preferred here to Radic Cherney by Ramos. He only returned in the midweek UEFA Cup victory over two legs against Slavia Prague, although it was a difficult night for Tottenham Hotspur. Alan, Hunt, Alan Hutton plays his first cup final within two months of joining Tottenham. No place for young Jamie O'Hara today. Michael Dawson and Kevin Prince-Boteng have both been troubled by hamstring strains. Ledley King out since the semi-final victory over Arsenal returning here. And Tom Huddleston only makes the bench, but effectively, Shirley Ray, Tottenham's first choice midfield and strike force in particular. Yes, certainly, we expect it to line up in a 4-4-2 situation, obviously with King and Woodgate playing together for probably very close to the first time, I think. Robinson's experience playing here at Wembley will be vital to them. And, of course, everybody hopes that uh, Berbatov and Keane can actually cause Chelsea lots of problems because they do have the ability to do that. Avram Grant's biggest dilemma, who to play and who to leave out. A stellar cast are not involved for Chelsea this afternoon. But John Terry, with just one first-team outing in the past three months, is back, as you've seen. Wayne Bridge preferred to Ashley Cole at left-back. Frank Lampard returns in midfield. 
He didn't start in the Champions League game in Greece in midweek. Alongside him, Mikkel Essien and John Obi Mikel. Nicolas Anelka does partner Didier Drogba up front. Drogba got both goals as Chelsea came from behind to win the trophy against Arsenal 12 months ago. He also got the winner, of course, in the FA Cup final here in May. He has pedigree, and so do Chelsea, as I mentioned. Their ninth cup final in 11 years this afternoon. Ray. We expect that uh, Chelsea will play 4-3-3. Uh, Anelka, who normally plays up the front on his own, will be pushed out to that left-hand side, where he does quite favour that side. Phillips will be on the right-hand side, and Obi Mikel will be the holding midfield in the, mid in the middle of play there, allowing Lampard and Essien to break forward. Thank you, Ray. Mark Halsey gets this prestige appointment, the referee today. He refereed the all-important for Tottenham Hotspur fans semi-final in this competition some five years ago when Spurs destroyed Chelsea on the night by five goals to one, one of the very few victories they recorded over their London rivals in the last 20 years. By and large, by far, Chelsea have dominated. 27 games against Chelsea without a victory before that 5-1 win for Tottenham in 2001-2002. And in all, only two Spurs wins over Chelsea in any competition since 1990. What a day this would be to even up the balance. Chelsea get the 2007-2008 Carling League Cup final underway. It's traditional colours for both clubs. Reminiscent indeed of their FA Cup final meeting back in 1967. And an early chance for Robbie Keane to break at Chelsea. It's still Keane, deflected! And very close to opening the scoring with one of the all-time quick goals here at Wembley. Well, I don't know if that was nerves or not, but it was a terrible ball there for the fullback. Allowed Keane to get in, and don't think actually Keane struck it as well as he wanted to. He hit it at John Terry rather than pass aside him. Good block by John Terry, but a lucky let up there for Valetti. Aaron Lennon to take the corner for Tottenham, starting on the front foot. Berbatov got a piece of it, and Ledley King was in there to make a nuisance of himself too. And it's not a characteristic Chelsea start by any means, Ray, is it? Well, it's not, but you think all the experience that Chelsea have got, they started off quite slowly at the back there, the ball's dropped in it, but uh, Berbatov gets up there, and uh, certainly Ledley King, I mean, actually for me, that's a corner. That's a corner for me, Drogba toe ended that over, and I think Ledley King was making up point to Mr Halsey. King again came out and headed it for Tottenham, who've made a brisk start on their return to the big time this afternoon. Malbronk to Keane. Chimbonda does start at left back, incidentally, much debate as to whether it would be Hutton right and Chimbonda left for Tottenham. Yes, he does, and that'll be an interesting battle because uh, Chimbonda on the right hand side, I'm quite comfortable with him. When he plays on that left back spot there, I'm not too sure about his defending qualities, and if Wright Phillips is on his game running at him, that will be very, very interesting. Jonathan Woodgate, one of four defenders brought in by Ramos over the transfer window, and very quick into his Tottenham career, getting into a cup final, I guess it's why he came. Decent run from midfield. Genus made a nuisance of himself, so did Malbron. And still... Genus with a little bit of room, Tottenham asking all the questions here early on. Lennon, Hutton came to help, Lennon wants to have a dart against Wayne Bridge. Lampard out to Michael Essien, but Chelsea cannot get out of the area around their own penalty area. Well, it's very early days yet, but certainly Spurs have started the brighter, they've passed it around a lot crisper, they've found their players with those passes, whereas Chelsea really have looked sluggish, and whenever they have had possession, they've given it away very cheaply. You'd suggest, Ray, that it was a side struggling because of so many changes after a midweek game, but of course that's exactly the same position for Tottenham Hotspur. Well, it's actually worse for Tottenham Hotspur because uh, Spurs had to play on Thursday evening, whereas uh, you know, Chelsea played far earlier in the week, so that can't be an excuse at all. So um, Chelsea supporters just hope that... Uh, with their experience, they'll just take a little bit more time to get into the game. Drug was helped it in behind Chimbonda, right Phillips was on the burst. 
What a fillip for Wright Phillips today to be picked up ahead of so many rivals for that berth for Chelsea. Well, certainly, uh, as the players were shaking hands with the dignitaries beforehand, Joe Cole looked a very, very disappointed player there as he was shaking hands because I'm sure he would have thought he's had a good season this year and that he would be one of the regulars in. But that's football, it's not to be, and uh, Wright Phillips has got the opportunity. Belletti covered round for Chelsea, but they've given it away again, Essien, seized on by Genus. Obi-Mikel got his head to it for Chelsea, now it's Frank Lampard. Anelka starting out wide left, as he did actually feature in the Olympiakos game midweek, not as a, an out-and-out -out partner for Drogba. No, they obviously they're playing this 4-3-3, and to be fair, Anelka, even when he plays up front on his own, he favours coming out to this left-hand side and running this left-hand channel. So it really shouldn't be a problem for him out here, uh, apart from maybe when he has to track back down this left side, he won't be too keen to do that very often. Real air of confidence about Tottenham from the off here. Chimbonda. Malbrock again gets past his man, wasn't the best ball, and Tottenham might have made more of it, there's a sympathetic round of applause from Berbatov, but he was in space inside him. Well he was, and Jim Bond has come round the outside of him as well, so as he, you know, there was two balls, I think he tried to get Berbatov in, that was the more difficult ball, actually the simpler ball was maybe just to put, keep the ball moving, and Jim Bond was bombing on on the outside and would have got a good ball into the box. Martin Yol was sacked on the 26th of October after one win in ten. You can't say that the Ramos revolution has brought a string of wins for Tottenham, but there is no doubt the makeup of the side is different, the attitude in the side is different, they do look sharper and leaner over the ground. And uh, Avram Grant, who's a good friend of Ramos, of course, would probably be the first to acknowledge. I think he'd prefer to be facing old Tottenham rather than new Tottenham this afternoon. There's yeah, certainly the difference I've spotted since, and, and it's not rocket science, they do look fitter. You know, last season, many, many games, they were in front by half-time and couldn't sustain it throughout the second half, and particularly vulnerable in the last 20 minutes of a game. I think they're fitter now and that they certainly last the game better and actually winning games in that last 20 minutes. Physical power of... Zakora seemed to good advantage then as he brushed Wright Phillips aside. Berbatov taking on Carvalho. The Chelsea support by and large is in the end at New Wembley behind Peter Cech in this first half. They've seen most of the action so far too. Mikel Tabelletti, his first taste of an English Cup final this afternoon. And the first touch before Robinson, but Belletti, if you remember his experience, is his first Cup final, but he started very, very nervously. That ball through to Paul Robinson was really very, very sloppy. Paolo Ferreira, just one of the many disappointed men in the Chelsea camp this afternoon, of course. A quick rundown. Ivanovic, a newcomer perhaps, and therefore not fancy to be part of this this afternoon, but the likes of Ashley Cole, Makaleli, Maluda have all featured extensively throughout the season. Not involved today. Again, they feed Chimbanda. They must feel that they can get some change down this side of the field. Tottenham, and again, it's Chimbanda. And again, they do get a corner. They're doing it. It's a great run by Chimbonda. Again, Belletti went past Belletti as though he was still standing. But uh, certainly the problem they've got there is that Chimbonda then went down that outside and instead of playing the ball in his left foot, tried to play it on the outside of his right foot, which is obviously his favourite foot, and didn't quite get the quality in. But they've got a corner, and you know what happened with the first corner? They've got a chance from it. Then it comes across to the other side to try his luck from here. King again in there. John Terry's got to mark him this time. One at the back post by Chimbonda, off the top of the crossbar. And another scary moment for Chelsea. Well, he is dangerous on this far post. 
and he's got himself up against Mikel there, and that's that looping one. I don't think uh, I don't think that the lad on the line there was going to get it. He would have probably dropped in, but thankfully for Chelsea, it's hit the top of the ball. Robbie Keane's turn to have a go. This time against Carvalho. Chelsea defending very deep. Berbatov might indeed should have put Tottenham in front. Well, you just hope from Spurs' point of view that they don't regret these misses they've had because again Berbatov up above, above Cavallio, good flick header but not quite the accuracy he'll be disappointed he hasn't hit the target with that and that's not great chances but they've had three half chances against the Chelsea defence who don't normally give you that many in a game so they really do need to take advantage of this but certainly at the moment Tottenham are winning it on points 16 for the season before today for Berbatov, although he hasn't actually hit the net for Spurs in this particular competition. Still, you'd have fancied him at least to get the ball on the target. Carvalho again a little bit nervy. Last meeting between these sides was only a, just over a month ago. Chelsea won the Premier League game at Stamford Bridge 2-0. Last season they featured in an FA Cup sixth round, of course, which went to a replay. And it rather summed up Chelsea's recent domination over Spurs. Spurs fans may feel they had the game there for the taking, but Chelsea came back from 3-1 down to force a replay and saw Spurs off second time. But where is the cutting edge for Chelsea this afternoon? Early days, but it's been Tottenham all the way so far here at Wembley. Belted clear by Malbronk. Peter Cech further out of his goal than Ray Clements used to venture, which is saying something. <laughs> well, there have been a couple of times further than that, but uh, obviously I got nowhere near the ball when did get that far up. Bridge got there ahead of Robbie Keane. Anelka's header inside. SEN finds a blue shirt this time. Mikel feeds Belletti. Right Phillips. First chance with a little bit of room, and he almost linked again with Belletti. Chimbonda's hardly put a foot wrong there so far. Malbronk to Zakora. Brushed aside illegally, says Halsey, referee. Sakura has got a vital job here this afternoon. He's, uh, you know, he's going to sit in front of that back four, allow Jenis to break forward, and he really does have to be disciplined because if he's not, the likes of Essien and Lampard will break out of that midfield and cause Tottenham all sorts of problems. And Ray, what does it say to you about the way Ramos and Tottenham are approaching this today? That essentially they've only got one holding player, as you professionals like to say, in the middle of the park. Well, that's right. You know, they've obviously set their stall out. They're going to go at Chelsea. They feel they can create chances, and they have done so far, albeit half chances, but they have created chances. And certainly, defensively, Chelsea have looked a little bit shaky, which is so unusual for them. But that man on the ball now, Zakora, he is vital to him just as much as King and Woodgate are, Woodgate are at the back as well to keep that gate locked at the back. Woodgate feeds it into Robbie Keane who came short, couldn't link with Jermaine Genus. Lampard won it back, Terry and Carvalho. With every Chelsea name that you mention, already in their locker a host of medals. And such a contrast today in that respect between these sets of players. Multi-talented, multi-titleists all around the Chelsea side. But are Tottenham the hungrier today? Lines one up from distance, it hit Drogba. Chelsea's best foul, and well defended by Woodgate. Suddenly they did inject a little bit of urgency, Chelsea, and suddenly they look very menacing. Drogba couldn't keep it. Incredible record. When he scores, they win in finals. Can he do it again today? 
I mean, for the system that's put, that Chelsea are playing, he is the complete centre forward without a shadow of a doubt. You know, he's he's got a physical presence, he's got a good touch, he's got pace, he can hold the ball up, he can run the channels, and of course he does have that other small ingredient which is quite vital. He is capable of scoring goals as well. With an Elka trying to link with him wherever possible. Ray, would you have started with Robinson in goal for Tottenham today? Um, I would do, yes, certainly, because I think, you know, Cherney has done a good job when he's been in the side, but for me, um, the quality keeper at Spurs is Paul Robinson. Yes, he's, he's had his detractors, he lost a lot of confidence, but he's had, a, you know, he's had ten games out, he's had plenty of time to build that up, and uh, now he's got this task now of showing the world, again, the quality goalkeeper he is, and there's no better time or place than in a Wembley Cup final. Right, Phillips, just a little late on Chimbonda perhaps Andrew Garrett and Martin Yerby are the referee's assistants this afternoon great feather in their cap just as much as for the referee of course it's the Tottenham fans making most of the noise early on Chelsea end a little bit subdued Aimed at Berbatov, he got there. Tottenham's top scorer, Robbie Keane, with 20 in all. Here's his partner, Berbatov. Malbron gives it to Robbie Keane. Off Belletti. Missed ten games in all, Robinson, while Cherney temporarily took over as Tottenham's number one. Certainly feared for his future. That's something that Ramos has brought into Tottenham's game as well. You saw Robinson bring the ball out the box there, looking as though he's play, he was going to play along. Nine times out of ten in the previous regime he would have done. But Ramos wants them to play out for the back and... Uh, and certainly Robinson was patient and eventually found a white shirt he could get it to without just smashing it up the field in a 50-50 situation. Tottenham get the throw. And Chelsea once more are encamped around their own penalty area. Quickly taken us, had the touch been better by Chimbonda, he might have been in. But he's looking likely to get in, that's for sure. Well, that's his strength. He loves to get forward whether he's playing right back or left back. That's what, that's what his strength is and it always has been. And uh, certainly, you know, he's going to bomb forward on every occasion. And the more he can get forward, the more he's going to take away, you know, Wright Phillips's attacking ability because he's going to have to track him back, as simple as that. Drop on the header for Chelsea. Lampard's got a bit of room. He was looking for an Elka. I mean, you mentioned an Elka there. I think that's the first time we mentioned him in the, the 17 minutes into the game. I can't remember him having a meaningful touch out on his left-hand side so far. There's, most of the play has been down on the far side of the pitch for both teams. And, uh, well, there you go. He's having a touch now. He was listening to you, Ray. We all know what he could do when he comes to life. So too Drogba, who's on it now. Given away all too cheaply, though, wasn't it? Forward by King. Berbatov got there just. Held off by Terry, it seemed. It is a, another Tottenham free kick. It's a wonderful touch by Berbatov, and I think just at this moment that John Terry has a pull of the shirt there, definitely a foul, but if you remember, you know, John's only had one full game since he's come back from injury, and I just think at this moment, he's just finding it a little bit difficult to get up to the pace of the game.
Genus will take for Tottenham. Chelsea with everybody back. Woodgate was coming in around the back of Berbatov. Well, he doesn't get many, John Woodgate, but we, we do know what a good header of the ball he can be. Well, he's gone off on the back of uh, Berbatov there, and again, Chelsea marking, slack. I think it's, it's <laughs> Ovi Bikel there who's anywhere near Jonathan Woodgate. And uh, these are the sort of games he's come here for. He wants to win medals, he wants to be successful, he thinks he can do that coming to Tottenham. And what a partnership that is, King and Woodgate, if they can keep the two of them fit. That's the main trouble at the moment, of course, and has been throughout Woodgate's career. But as you say, Ray, Tottenham with the air of a side individually with a hunger to start collecting medals in their careers now. King, the only survivor, of course, from Tottenham Hotspur's last appearance in the final of this competition. Beaten by Blackburn in 2002. Woodgate searching out Genus. Wayne Bridge was there first. Avram Grant's trying to influence things from the touchline. Bridge launches it. It's reached Drogba. King and Woodgate there with him so well then. But they'll know, of course, classically with Drogba, you can keep him quiet for all bar one minute of the game, just as Manchester United did here in the FA Cup final last May, Ray, and it was all over. Now, quality strikers, no matter how well you deal with them, will get a chance somewhere in the game. And uh, as I say, at the moment, we've seen absolutely nothing of Elka. We've seen little, and I mean little, flashes of Drogba. But you can guarantee, over the 90 minutes, we will see something from one or two of those, of those players. Berbatov links with Keane. Little showy, as we've come to expect from Keane in return. The white shirts out, crowded Drogba again. Lampard couldn't collect it. How sharp does Frank Lampard look? You mentioned John Terry. Well, again, not been in the game as much as you'd like. We've seen a couple of flashes from him, but again, Sakura is managing to nullify their midfield any, any forward breaks. Um, I mean, the one problem with Sakura, as we saw there, he is great at breaking up attacks and winning the ball. Sometimes his passing is not of the quality you'd want from that holding midfield player. Robbie Keane gets turned, and he was trying to feed it into his partner Berbatov as an important touch by Terry now let's see how quickly Chelsea can break no Tottenham were quicker to regroup Zakura got across so well doing exactly the job that Ray Clements was talking about Carvalho Obi Mikel Anelka trying to get more involved, not his best touch. Malbronk, his sometime international teammate, got there ahead of him. And Anelka returned the favour almost, but Tottenham keep the ball. Tottenham continue to squeeze and squeeze. Alan Hutton has hardly put a foot wrong since arriving from Rangers in the January transfer window. That was his right foot. Got the ball, but seemed to catch Drogba too. The interesting thing, it looks like Avram Grant has made a tactical change by bringing Drogba out on his left-hand side and putting Nelka now down the middle, so uh, obviously he didn't feel that was working and uh, it's time for changes. Keane. Looking for help here. And still looking. Did the next best thing. It's not Mourinho-esque, but I suppose Chelsea fans would be reassured, Ray, that he is attempting to 
change the balance of the game a little bit halfway through the half. Yeah, so I mean, as I say, halfway through the half, and we've really seen little or nothing of Chelsea as as an attacking force. Uh, and at some stage, they're going to have to create something from somewhere. So, you know, it's maybe time for him to look at that change, see if that can work. And if that's not working in the second half, he might have to make more drastic changes. Um, you know, what he's done in picking his team, he, he's picked his two most powerful players and his goal scorers, and he's tried to fit them into a system rather than let one of them play in the position they're actually most comfortable in. Woodgate towered over and Ilka then to win the header. We all know Chelsea too well, though, don't we? We've seen them start so slowly on big days before and grind the opposition into the dust. We know we can never rule them out. The final last year in this competition, exactly 12 months ago, was a case in point. They came from behind to beat Arsenal then. Check aims it at Drogba. Hutton was against him, did enough against him too. Obi Mikel. Almost caught by Keane. Lampard got his head up, floated it into Drogba. Great take by Drogba. An L cut. Chelsea with four in the box suddenly. Terry. The little raising of the anti you sense here by Chelsea over the past minute or two. And their crowd sense it too. They've used the full width of the pitch. Right Phillips aimed at Drogba. Chelsea get a corner. Woodgate did his job. Well, that's the first glimpse we've had of Chelsea doing what they're good at. They just keep the ball, they probe, they're patient trying to stretch from one side to the other and eventually get a quality ball into the box and Jonathan Woodgate did well to clear it but this is the first little bit of pressure that the Spurs defence are going to have to deal with and we've been going for 25 minutes Lampard takes Carvalho beaten by Woodgate Keane took his eye off it Carvalho got it back for Chelsea man down in the middle of the box is Drogba Holes is going to stop the game It was his own man, wasn't it? It was his own player, Cavallio, who's coming to the back of him and just jarred his neck, that's all. But uh, he'll be fine, he'll just uh, be a little bit uncomfortable for a few minutes, I'm sure. But uh, it's like having somebody running the back of you in a car. You sat in your seat and all of a sudden your head gets jolted back by somebody coming through the back of you. He's such a mild-mannered man off the field. And he's an animal on it, you know. And I'm not talking about drug, but I'm talking about Carvalho. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the boss. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm sure he'll be uh, enjoying being there, watching uh, the game. He was at Fulham yesterday, watching Fulham West Ham. And uh, he's there with his assistant, Mr Baldini, as well. I think it'll take more than that to keep Drogba out of a cup final somehow. No panic about Tottenham after those one or two little moments of Chelsea pressure. And Woodgate stroked it out to Berbatov. They're loving this Wembley experience so far, these Tottenham players. Keane. Chelsea wanted a handball against Robbie Keane. Malbron! <laughs> Check got down there. I think he saw it late, Ray. I think he did. It was a good strike from Malbron. When the ball's played in there, you just, you just wonder if he did bounce up onto Robbie Keane's hand, but... Referee was close, didn't allow it, and that was just about going to sneak in. Yeah, maybe his left hand it touched. Good strike from Malbron, and uh, Peter Cech has got to be a hell of a shot to beat him from there. What a response by Tottenham, though, to the only real spell of Chelsea pressure so far. Cech's come for this too. Normal service resumed. And he wants to get Chelsea going quickly. Zane did Anelka, Hutton, read it well. Essien followed up fastest. Lampard gets into his stride. So too bridge down the Chelsea left. More wit suddenly about Chelsea though. Tottenham looking more stretched. Lampard! 
Well, even for him, that would have been special from that distance. Well, that certainly would. It was a, got tremendous power in it. I'm not sure it was as close as we maybe thought to start off with. I think, you know, Robinson died, but I think that was quite quite a distance wide, but tremendous power in it. And I saw him warming up before the game when, from sort of 25, 30 yards, Lampard was really striking the ball well. So we know what he's capable of, and Paul Robinson there knows what he's capable of as well, having played against him in league matches and, of course, having trained with him in England as well. Lampard with four on Chelsea's run to the final in this competition alone this season. And he is Chelsea's top scorer yet again. Through the 100 mark to the other week, of course, which is an incredible achievement for a midfield player. Robbie Keane to Ch Chimbonda. And on by King to Woodgate. Hutton played in many big games for Rangers, of course, in Europe as well as domestically in Scottish football, cup finals and league deciding games. King got a bit of luck. Can he profit from it? Robbie Keane's in space here. He was offside. Referee rightly plays the advantage. Good work by referee Halsey. Chelsea couldn't take full advantage of that, though, because, again, Zakora was alert. I think uh, Ramos will be very pleased with the way his team's played so far in this game. The only one thing I, 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 they're just missing at the moment, they're very much going down the left-hand side most of the game, and we've really seen nothing of Aaron Lennon yet. And he's somebody who can open up defences if he gets running at you. And certainly, because of Tottenham's predominance down that left-hand side, the ball has hardly been at Aaron Lennon's feet. In fact, probably the only time he's touched it is when he's taken corners. Drogba lays it off to Anelka, and he'd gone again, spun into the space. That's the first real combination we've seen between the two of them, and it was very promising for Chelsea. It was, and Woodgate showed all his experience. He knew he knew as soon as that ball was laid up where he was going, so he just quickly uh, gave him a little tap, nothing malicious, but knew he had to concede the foul, otherwise he would have been through. One or two promising little signs beginning to emerge here for Chelsea on the half-hour mark at Wembley. Certainly within range for the likes of a Lampard. There are five in Robinson's wall. And two Chelsea men too. Essien as ever is getting in there to be nuisance number one. But we know the job he's trying to do for his side. It is Lampard. Deflection. Off a Tottenham boot. Woodgate. Now it's a good job Woodgate followed John Terry's run then because the wall jumped and it went straight underneath the wall and that would have been a problem for Paul Robinson. He would have demanded a very, very good save to have, to have stopped it going in. Lampard for Chelsea. Couldn't get it past Hutton. Out as far as right Phillips. Almost cut in half by the first man out to him, Zakora, I think it was. Chelsea want to see a card for this. I think, to be fair, he did catch him there, but I, I think he was falling already. He, he was tried... too quick for him, actually, yeah. wasn't he? <laughs> he was coming out to block, and then, obviously, the ball was shifted. He tried to change direction, and he just fell into him, really. It looked a, it looked a lot, lot worse than what it was. And no card. But it's Chelsea's second free kick inside a minute from almost identical position, a little more central. Robinson's put up the same wall. Chelsea have got the same fellas in there making a nuisance of themselves. And Drogba and Lampard are the men over it again. Lampard's staying there, still not ten. Well, when are they ever ten these days? Who's it to be for Chelsea? Drogba. I think it was a, a momentary frisson of anxiety for Tottenham. Well, I have to say that it wasn't that far over. I mean, Robinson was seemed quite cool and calm, and it, but it was probably two or three foot 
over and maybe might have missed the far post as well. But, uh, you know, that, don't give too many free kicks around there because that man there, once he gets his range, can cause you an embarrassment. And how often he's done it to Tottenham. King crosses into enemy territory. Malbronk got his head up. Sakura wants it. Hutton wants it wide, and he gets. Ray made the point, though. Aaron Lennon's hardly had any ball down this side so far in the game. Little touch from him there. Helped to win a free kick, too. I think it may have been against Michael Essien for being a little bit late in the challenge. Genesis has already delivered one good ball in from this situation, which Woodgate just headed over, so if he can get another quality ball in. Lampard got there first for Chelsea. Sakura now for Tottenham to Chimbonda. Ever so steady, not prepared to risk possession. Out the other side with Hutton now. Well, one of the great advantages, I think, with Woodgate now a Tottenham player, Ray, is that extra assurance in possession. He, he does add something extra. Maybe Michael Dawson in time can be that player too, but Woodgate's been there and done it, hasn't he? No, Woodgate is a quality player. You know, he's, um, he's shown that when he's played in international football as well. And he's very, very comfortable with the ball. And Ledley King as well, as, you know, as we've seen there. Um, Ledley certainly is more than comfortable to come out the back four and run into the middle of the field and play with the ball. And, uh, you know, Ledley just uh, showed his captaincy to Paul Robinson there. We spoke about 10 or 15 minutes ago about kicking long balls from the back. Robinson did that. They've conceded a free kick because of it. And Ledley King just had a real go at Robinson saying, that's not the way we play it anymore. Let's try and get the ball out from the back and play through the team rather than front to back. It's been played in a great spirit so far, but following that little tangle between Carvalho and Berbatov, one or two of the Tottenham players expressed their opinions a little too strongly to referee Halsey and Genus was singled out for the lecture. It was only ever going to be a Chelsea free kick. Drop under it, but Woodgate with master of him there in the air. And second time it was Hutton who climbed above an Elka. Sums Tottenham up in this first half, really defensively. Berbatov, delightful touch. Terry stood firm against him. Lampard came to help. Right, Phillips is on the burst. Down to Drogba. SEN joins in for Chelsea. Drogba's been taken out off the ball. The referee played the advantage initially. But there's going to be a card here, the first of the day, I think. Yes, I mean, uh, Zakora was really late on uh, Drogba there. Drogba's made a meal of it, to be fair, but certainly he was late. To be fair to Mark Halsey, he tried to allow the advantage, but then realised that uh, it wasn't to Chelsea's advantage, and although the ball finished out going out for a throw-in, he's brought it back quite rightly. And uh, given Chelsea another one of these free kicks in this very dangerous position, they've had two from here already, uh, haven't tested Robinson yet, but uh, certainly you give too many ara around here, as I say, there's Drogba and there's Lampard, who are both, or can be, deadly from this sort of distance. Will a set-piece be the way that Chelsea force a breakthrough in this Carling League Cup final? Haven't threatened much from open play. Drogba! Wouldn't you just know it? 38 minutes in, 
Didier Drogba does it yet again in a cup final for Chelsea. Well, we talked about it, and there's no doubt that man has that ability. And uh, it looked as though in the end, Robinson was unsighted there. <laughs> Unfortunately, Robbie Keane has moved to his right exactly where the ball has gone in. If Robbie had stayed there, he's moved across and opened up that area for him. And he's just plunked it straight in there. Great strike. But I think that Ramos will be disappointed, having set up the team defensively as he has, that Keane moved away from the area which was protecting the far post, and that's where it finished up going in. It was a set piece that breaks the deadlock, and of course it had to be this man, 10 for the season now. But in terms of a big game player, are there many better in world football at the moment? Tottenham have done so much so well in this first half of the Carling Cup final, but they are behind. Robbie Keane spun well! Well, I was about to say, Ray, one thing you never see with Chelsea is conceding after going in front in a game like this, but they almost did then. Now, it was a lovely turn from uh, Robbie Keane. He's just used his body weight against Cavallio to create some space, hit it on the spin, and... Uh, Luckily for Chelsea, uh, Czech was in the right place. Well, I say luckily, Czech normally is in the right place. Can they exert their expert-like grip on a cup final from here, Chelsea? Seemed to hit the arm of Woodgate under pressure. And Elka tried to link with Drogba. Breaks for Hutton for Tottenham. Berbatov has shown and collected so much so well for Spurs so far. Trying to link with Keane at the other end. Czech got in a bit of a tangle. And Chelsea got away with it. What he's furious with Carvalho, you know, he said he was... Uh, re you'd know better than me, Ray, but it looked to me like the keeper shouted he was coming and Carvalho got in the way. I mean, the problem here, of course, at Wembley, you've got 85,000 people screaming and sometimes your voice is not heard and you just actually wonder, it was so far for him to come, did he need to? There was Carvalho and Bridge were there that would have dealt with it anyway, I think, so... Um, you know, Czech is a wonderful goalkeeper, but maybe on that occasion he didn't need to come as far as he did and nearly caused his side an embarrassment. Not really a surprise then that he's taking a minute or two to compose himself and the players in front of him. Anelka got something on it. Terry won it ahead of Berbatov. And now the noise is from the Chelsea end, and suddenly it's all gone quiet on the Tottenham side. Yes, I think, uh, you know, the Tottenham supporters, having spoken to a number of them, leading up to this game, yes, they did fancy their chances of beating Chelsea, but they really did feel they needed to score first to give them that extra confidence, yes, we can go on and beat them. Now they've got to come from behind again, and that's against the Chelsea side, who, when they get in front, they do try and t dictate the pace of the game, keep the ball, frustrate you, and just wait for another opportunity. They don't go chasing a second goal. Bridge to Anelka. And again, Bridge. Zakora in the right place once more, Keen. Mikel got quickly to him, but a little bit of space for Lennon, and wouldn't you know it, his luck's been out all half. When he does get the chance to really run at Chelsea, he loses his footing. Yeah, that was his first opportunity in 40-odd minutes of actually having a run at them. He had space in front uh, to use that lightning pace he got, and, of course, the uh, pitch was quite heavily watered before it was kicked off and uh, just lost his footing. One added minute to play here at the end of the 45. Keane. Lennon gives it back to him. Genus. Not seen a lot of Genus getting in front of the ball or making surging breaks into the 
through this crowded Chelsea midfield area Ray, in this first half and it's been a bit of a feature for Tottenham recently. Yeah, I think to be fair he has made a number of forward runs but he's just not got on the end of anything because obviously there is there is three Chelsea players in that central midfield and therefore the spaces are not there for him and uh, yes he's made the forward runs but unfortunately nobody's been able to pick him up with a pass. Is that good planning by Grant to deal with it? Well, well now he might get the chance, given away by Lampard. Tottenham have got the break on Chelsea here, and they've got numbers. Berbatov for Tottenham Hotspur, needed too long, needed too long. Well, we spoke at the start, how many chances are Spurs going to have? That's a great opportunity, and he can't keep his feet against slips, but that is an opportunity for somebody of his quality should have managed to get a finish at whether he scored or not he should have tested Peter Cech and didn't do that the first chance of the game the first big chance went to Berbatov how many more will he get two in one half in a cup final like this We're into stoppage time, and you get the idea that Chelsea would be quite happy to run the clock down in this position. Now you've only got to look out. John Terry's walking towards the Fairy ball. Fairy footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> they'll just see out this minute here. They'll be very, very comfortable and pleased with this scoreline at half time because we've only seen glimpses of them. We haven't seen the real powerful Chelsea they can be. Uh, but they've got themselves in front without playing spectacularly well. Malgrot to Berbatov. Is the time for one more Tottenham thrust? Unlikely to be. They've got a free kick. I'm not sure, but I think the whistle had actually gone before Frank Lampard clattered into Berbatov here. That's why the uh, Tottenham players are a little bit aggrieved. I think it was the first challenge that came in, not the Lampard challenge. No, I think you're right, it was the first challenge he blew up for. But Lampard equally feels that Tottenham players are trying to get him booked. Yeah, he's having... It. Well, to be fair, Zakora came running over, and certainly that you could see that was what he was he was trying to get Mark Kelsey to do. And, you know, no professional footballer likes to see that, and certainly, you know, Frank Lampard is, is making it known to Zakora that, hey, let the referee make the decision, you're not allowed to... And the rules say you're not allowed to go see him to, to book people, so... Um, a little bit silly of Zakora for me. Closing moments of this first half at Wembley. Hutton takes the free kick for Tottenham. Helped on by Berbatov. No free kick this time. Right, Phillips. Well, Robbie Keane went flying here under a little bit of pressure by Carvalho, but... No breakthrough for Tottenham Hotspur. Didier Drogba has got the goal, which puts Chelsea in front. It was a set piece, and Chelsea, by some way, have had to work hard for the lead they've enjoyed. They had a couple of near things from similar positions before they got their noses in front and it's taken them a fair while to subdue a bright Tottenham Hotspur start but they have it in control and Ray really at half time the biggest question must be surely how could Tottenham Hotspur turn it round from here? Well they've played well in, in, in spasms Tottenham they certainly started very brightly they were the better side for the first 20 minutes um, so they've got that to, to fall back back on certainly but what they're going to have to do is they're not going to get many chances in this second half and they need to take them when they come their way and in the first half they probably had four or five half chances one really good chance at the end from Berbatov and they haven't taken them and against good sides you only get so many in a game and you need to take them when they come your way 
Ray, thank you very much indeed for the moment. We'll take a break here at Wembley. The uh, news is that Chelsea have got their noses in front against Tottenham Hotspur in the 2007-2008 Carling League Cup final. Tottenham have played well, but they're going to have to do even better to force their way back into it. Chelsea lead 1-0 at the break. <laughs> Going in 10 seconds. Welcome back to Wembley, everyone. Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspur unchanged at the break. The breakthrough came for Chelsea thanks to Didier Drogba on 38 minutes. And they have one hand as we speak on this Carling League Cup. One hand on retaining it indeed. Here comes the goal scorer, last out. Ray Clements alongside me. Ray, how can Tottenham take it away from Chelsea from here? Well, they haven't been overawed by Chelsea in the first half, so certainly they need to start brightly. And for me, they need to get Aaron Lennon more in the game. You know, Aaron Lennon on his game is so quick he can cause any fullback a problem and all right he's up against the quality fullback in my hook in bridges but certainly he, he can still cause problems and he hasn't had the ball enough for me and if you've got Aaron Lennon in the side you have to get the ball to him otherwise he doesn't do anything else for you what he needs to do is get it run at people deliver crosses play balls into front people so for me that would be the one thing that I would think they should be doing better in the second half get it out to Lennon Tottenham will get us going in the second half. Thank you, Ray. They've only drawn a blank once in the last ten games of the Ramos revolution. That was the 0-0 draw at Everton in the Premier League. But Tottenham have got to find a goal from somewhere here this afternoon. Did so much so well. Certainly a side transformed since that early season spell under Martin Yol, which produced just one win in ten, which ultimately forced Yol out. I mean, you have to say, Paul, don't you, that, to be fair, the back four of Spurs have not been troubled at all. Uh, I can't remember Paul Robinson having a serious save to make that, apart from the free kick which has flowed in. And uh, so they've been very comfortable at the back. It's just, can they upset the Chelsea back four and certainly they did do that in the first 20 minutes Belletti got there just ahead of Malbronk Sien tried to feed it in behind Jim Bonda what can we expect from Ramos second half if, if the game does develop with, with Tottenham still trailing Ray with say 20 to go are you looking for some big impact then from the new Tottenham manager I, you look at the bench and you know certainly you could bring Huddleston on or give them more passing options than Zakora will but for me Zakora has done a good job in the middle of the field he has broken up play um, you know he, he stopped Chelsea breaking out on the counter attack at Spurs time and time again but it's just his quality on the ball sometimes isn't the greatest um, you know they've got their main strike force on they don't get any better than those two although of course he does have down bent who does have tremendous pace and is dangerous in the air one wonders whether if it does pan out this way Tottenham Hotspur fans tonight might be ruining the departure of Jermaine Defoe in the transfer window to Portsmouth essentially as Ray pointed out when we gave you the team news at the start of the day this was really a first choice Tottenham midfield and strike force today there's not much else in the locker New players have been arriving at Tottenham over the transfer window. Four defenders in all. Hutton, Woodgate, Gilberto, who's injured, and young Chris Gunter, who's cup tied. Here's Genus. Oh, his first touch might have been better, but Terry snaffled it up when it wasn't. Berbatov got there ahead of Terry second time. The ball was allowed to drop by Chelsea. Then they did shut the door. And Elka foraged back well. SEM. Not always very pretty by Chelsea, is it? But they have this uncanny knack of getting the all-important block in, outnumbering a man in possession. A defender appears from nowhere sometimes. Oh, Drogba felt that. That is a contribution by Lennon, which he might rue.
Only a talking to from referee Mark Isaac. The feet were high. Have you ever seen a player draw as many fouls as Drogba? Ray? <laughs> well, he doesn't. He doesn't ruin the opportunity of making it look a lot worse than what it actually is. Uh, but certainly it was a free kick. But certainly, but certainly, um, you know, he does. Even the free kick that the the goal came from, he made the most of that to to get the free kick in the first place. Mikel to Lampard. Chelsea ball. Chelsea second half attacking the end where the Chelsea fans have congregated today. It's the, actually the other end, what used to be the tunnel end here at Wembley before the redesign. And for the FA Cup final, they were actually at the opposite end of the stadium. Also scored in every game on their way to the final. The uh, road for Spurs started against Middlesbrough. One of the few victories early season under Martin Yol. Blackpool was the first game in charge for Juan de Ramos. Ironically, it's ended up in a trip to Wembley in the same competition. Then Premier League opposition, Manchester City and, of course, Arsenal. Famously five in the second leg of the semi-final. All they crave is one here this afternoon. Mikel to Terry to Bridge with room and Elka pulled into space too loves this side of the field Essien right Phillips Lampard Chelsea have knocked it around well Drogba back into Frank Lampard and it was an important little block by King Malbronk then got in ahead of Wright Phillips and muscled him aside. Can Tottenham find a cutting edge this afternoon? Berbatov. Took a long time to make up his mind. Genus. Hutton screaming for it, eventually gets it. And the Tottenham fans are screaming for him to use it. Back inside instead to Genus. And still running square. Chimbonda. Still Chimbonda. Zakora can hit one. Better than that, actually. I think he was probably the last player in a white shirt he wanted in that shooting position, I have to say. But it just highlighted the problem that Spurs have got there. They had good possession, they actually had numbers over, and the ball de needed delivering very quickly out to Hutton out on that right-hand side. Tottenham delayed it, and when you do that against Chelsea, they certainly get themselves so organised, it's really difficult then to get through them. Drogba clearly has a problem at the moment, right? I don't think he's putting it on this time. Interesting as well that each Chelsea substitute was like a greyhound out of the traps when Drogba went down. <laughs> well, when you win one nil, everybody wants to get on. Bridge. Round two. Hutton can't catch him. Woodgate got the block on. That's really the first time we've seen Bridge forward in an advanced position, doing what he's good at, getting into the last third of the field and delivering balls into the box. Mikel. Just sense that Chelsea are just trying to keep the game quiet while they sort out Drogba and his future in this. Well, I think... Chelsea will try and keep the game quiet. You know, the, the ironical thing is that Mourinho left because Abramovich wanted a more exciting team playing, and yet they still play the same way for me in terms of I don't see any great adventure in them. They've just got very, very good players who they will create chances in their, in their own patient way during a game. And once they get in front, they'll sit there and they'll keep it and they'll frustrate you until you leave yourself open and then they'll nick another one somewhere. One thing's for sure, Ray, the fans never get tired of being at Wembley for a big day out or indeed of winning trophies here. And neither do the players.
Drogba's not moving very easily, but again, we see it up with him all the time that he's broken in half and limps around for two or three minutes and suddenly the bionic man is back. The test for every player when they're limping around like that is when the ball arrives around them and then you look how quickly they move then makes you realise whether they are injured or not. Gray, of course, in his pump before his Tottenham days, played for a club where injuries were not allowed or discussed. No, we used to go through a season with 14 or 15 players then, so it's how times change, eh? Better from Tottenham, but that blue line holds firm. Sakura. Can he lift Tottenham, drive them forward, find a penetrating pass or two? It's reached Malbranc, we know he has the skills to do it. Tried to go through an impossible route there, through three pairs of Chelsea legs. Anelka. Malbranc did recover himself well. Now there is a player who looks sharper and all round more authoritative under the new regime. Surely the Tottenham fans must be saying there is a chance in this side, the second half. They squandered two good ones in the first period. Genus. Chelsea smother them, as usual. Given away by Wright Phillips, but it broke kindly for Anelka. All alone, really. Not too many Chelsea men were breaking into a sweat to join up then. What about him as a signing and a piece of business in the transfer window, right? Anelka. I think that, um, you know, he's one of the better bits of business that was done because um, he's as near as you can get to drug very strong, he's quick. Sometimes he looks a little bit languid, to put it nicely, I think, but uh, again, you give the man space, he is capable of scoring goals. His record shows that and he's done it every club he's been at. Well, Ramos is out there, and uh, one or two of the Tottenham substitutes are warming up on the far side. But no imminent sign of change. No, as I say, I think it's probably still a little early yet for him. You know, he's, he's given them time to... But you can see how they're set up now. Chelsea are just allowing Spurs to have the ball in the, their own third and even the middle third of the field and they don't really start closing down seriously until it gets near the last third. And certainly at the moment, Tottenham can't find a way to get a ball, a penetrative ball through to cause Chelsea an embarrassment in that last third of the field. All, all the play is in front of John Terry and Cavallio, which those two centre-halves will love all day long. Darren Bent is the one that Tottenham fans may feel at least is uh, capable of making an impact up front. Terry got there ahead of Berbatov. Goal kick. Rumours of his demise yet again premature, John Terry. Well, he's a leader, you know, and you need leaders in every side, particularly, you no know, great sides, and I think the rest of the, the team out there respect John Terry. You know, he might not be as fit as maybe he'd like to be because he's, he hasn't had the number of games, so it's only natural. But he still he still knows still knows how to lead a side, and uh, they all respect him and listen to what he says on the field, and a manager needs a good captain like that. forward by Hutton. Gobbled up by Terry, though. Malbronk shepherded into a safe area by Mikel. Very, very unfussy, very unheralded, really, around such a stellar cast, but gets through his work so well, doesn't he? Drug the penalised, and he accepts with good grace. Tottenham get on with it. Zakora. Chimbonda's wide left. Sakura to Genus. 
Chelsea have got Tottenham where they want them at the moment, though. They seize their moment to win the ball back. Now it's a question of who can break fastest. It's 4-3 to Chelsea. It's Drogba. Right, Phillips, it wasn't the best ball to him. And El Cap. It's a good job it wasn't the best ball there to, to Sean Wright Phillips because Chimbondo was having great difficulty getting back to cover him and he was totally free at one stage. And those are the situations that Chelsea thrive on. And, uh, you know, somehow Tottenham have got to lift their game because Chelsea are now controlling it. They're playing at a pace they want to play at and they're very comfortable at doing it. And Tottenham somehow have got to lift that pace and try and ruffle a few feathers. Otherwise, this game will die. A little bit of movement on the Tottenham bench, Ray, which we'll come back to in a moment, but it looks like they are about to make a change here. Bridge to Drogba. And again, it's Drogba. Robbie Keane, who didn't win his free kick at the other end, doesn't give one away this time at the other. Malbronk to Berbatov. Cleverly done. Can Lennon inject something here for Tottenham? Bridges the first defender. He wins a corner. And Tottenham want to get on with it. They are about to make a change, and it looks like it's Tom Huddleston who's going to come on, but they're going to take the corner first. They caused plenty of problems early in this with these corners. Not this time, Drogba. Hutton first there for Tottenham. Driving on. Picked off by an Elka though. Malbronk. Chimbonda. Tottenham with all the bodies still forward. It's a poor cross. Not a great clearing header by Mikel either, in truth. Keen to Chimbonda. And Robbie Keane again. Can he provide a spark? Tottenham fans are praying that that happens today. Berbatov's header. If you can call it a header. Well, it's more of a back pass, wasn't it? But at least uh, Tottenham have got into that, in and around that penalty area and put a little bit of pressure on. But when they get opportunities like the corner they had a minute ago, the quality has to be better. You know, they've got to. You know, they proved in the, in the first half if they get quality balls in, they might get a chance. But that was a really poor ball from Aaron Lennon a few minutes ago. But uh, here's a man who can pass the ball. That's a certainty. On the hour mark, Ramos does act. Pascal Chimbonda is sacrificed. Did so much so well, especially early on today. But Tom Huddleston is the player who's brought in here by Ramos. I'm not sure if he's not very happy or he's got an injury, but certainly the Spurs scores are going, come and get yourself off. He's you know, not happy. Which is uh, a very selfish attitude to have in a cup final or at any stage. Now, that is disappointing. That is so, so disappointing. What a little schoolboy. Going down the tunnel like that. All right. It's never nice to come off in a cup final you don't want to. But think about your teammates. Think about your club. No, that's not for me. And I don't think Ramos will like that either. There were rumours, of course, during the transfer window that Chibonda at one stage actually turned to his Tottenham teammates and said, I'm off, see you. Because he was so sure he was being moved on. Well, we remember how he actually finished moving he, after the last Arsenal game when he was at Wigan. He walked in the, walked in the dressing room after the last game. Uh, the season's finished and just handed his transfer request. It's a bit short by King. Well, that would have put it beyond Tottenham, surely. With Wright Phillips almost embarrassing Robertson and King. Genus, can he get more involved for Tottenham? This is more like it. Not for the first time today, a Tottenham player slides to the deck at an important moment. Well, what Tottenham have done now is they've gone to Chelsea's system. You know, we talk about people playing for the team. Well, Brank's had to go to left-back now, and that's where he's playing. And uh, they've still got Zakora holding in the middle of the field. And then they've got Jenis and, uh, and Huddleston. He'll try and get it and break forward and support Berbatov, Keane. And Lennon has now come onto this left-hand side to try and have a little bit of success, which obviously he didn't have on the right-hand side.
not very constructive or inventive by Chelsea. Their answer to that is we don't need to be, we're winning 1-0 and they're quite happy to do that. It's certainly up to Tottenham to break them down. And if any team surely playing in English football right now, Chelsea is the one side you don't have to be asking that question about. And that's been the case really from the the beginning of the Mourinho era and as Ray has pointed out it's uncannily like the Mourinho era once more today under Avram Grant the way Chelsea have gone about the task and who's to blame them when it's been so successful for them Bridge pumps it up there Woodgate returns it Keane couldn't keep it Tottenham have got to find a spark from somewhere though and they're struggling to do it Huddleston got a touch on that Big moment in his career too. But Ray, all the medals and all the experience of big cup finals are on the Chelsea side. Is that a factor here now and perhaps explaining why Tottenham are finding it so difficult to... Let's come back to it in a moment. And Elka's in! Well, There's a fantastic block by King. And he even gets a goal kick. <laughs> well, that's a strange one. I'm not seeing a replay of that. But certainly it looked like it was a fantastic tackle from Ledley King. You know, Woodgate tries to nick the ball in front of Drogba and King gets back. But obviously it's come off King here that he gets the block and it's rebounded back onto Nelka. So, Mr Halsey, you're right. That's why I'm not a referee. Lennon to Berbatov. Can they get Lennon more involved? Huddleston got his head up and he can do better than that. And Tottenham need him to. Shouldn't be overlooked, I think, with so much still to play for for Chelsea this season, that the importance of this game, the urgency of it from Tottenham's point of view with a European place guaranteed for the winners next season 11th in the Premier League Tottenham plenty of work to do to get into a UEFA Cup spot by that route yes they are in the quarter-final but PSV bar their way in the UEFA Cup this time round and it'll only get harder if they get through that one surely they have to look upon this as their best hope oh sure they do and uh, you know people could say Chelsea play the way they play because they are still in four trophies and it's, this is not Hello, or bent for them, you know, they've got another three trophies to play for. Um, so maybe they, they do play in a conservative way to make sure they've still got energy to play it towards the end of the season. But Spurs do have to go for it, it's as simple as that. There is no holding back. As we get into the last sort of last phase of the game, Tottenham are better, better getting beat 2 0 than going down in a like uh, tame little lions and losing 1 0. Just getting a shade ragged back there for Tottenham. Bridge did well. Won a free kick. Uncannily like the last 20 years in many respects for Tottenham fans who've seen Chelsea have the upper hand in so many ways. Tottenham had their bright moments in this game, but Chelsea now have them where they want them. Lampard and still Drogba onside. Sakura is in the right place. Lampard's been penalised, but it keeps Tottenham right down the other end as far as Chelsea are concerned. Might have been Solomon Kalou getting ready. A rare thing, Michael Essien has just given the ball away. Can Aaron Lennon punish him? It's still a bit more like it from Lennon. Room here for Huddleston on the back post. Frantic appeals for a penalty on that side against Wayne Bridge. And 
he's given it. Well. What? Tottenham Hotspur have been given a penalty. It took them an age to make up their minds, the referee and linesman. And Mark Halsey, the way he looked then, he wasn't sure about it. It, it was, was almost as an afterthought. Here yeah. it is, right. Well, there it is. There it was. Left hand definitely went towards the ball. The first time it did hit his hand, but he had no, it hit his arm and he had no chance to do anything with it. But then you definitely saw his left hand come towards the ball. Penalty, and this is, might be the lift that Spurs have wanted. And it's Dimitar Berbatov and not Robbie Keane to take this penalty. Is this the moment for Tottenham Hotspur? 1-1, one, one. 69 minutes on the clock. It didn't look like coming in truth. It certainly was a penalty, and Berbatov was the coolest man in North London. Well, you'd never have thought it was the penalty to get an equaliser in a cup final, would you? He, he just strolled up, waited for Peter Cech to move. Once he moved, just rolled it in the opposite corner. Not a problem for somebody of his quality. Wonderful goal. And to be fair, the assistant referee over that far side of the pitch, brave decision, but for me, it was the correct decision. And Chelsea can moan as much as they like. I definitely saw Bridges' hand go towards the ball. Are the fates with Tottenham Hotspur this afternoon? At last against Chelsea. The luck has turned their way, and we're level again with 20 to play. Frank Lampard. It was just a little bit obstructed as he fired the ball out to this side change coming for Chelsea I think it was already on the cards you know it is definitely Solomon Kalou coming on I think Terry's going to take the free kick first King got there ahead of Drogba Lennon now how important it was that Lennon got on it and ran at Chelsea players to help win the penalty, and he's at it again here. Huddleston, Hutton charging outside. More urgency about Tottenham, but Chelsea did regroup in time. Right, Phillips. What a free kick. And there is to be this Chelsea change now. And Sean Wright Phillips makes way. I think you'd say in the proper spirit compared to Chimbonda. That wasn't difficult the way Chimbonda went off, let's be honest. So, I mean, Anelka will come over this right hand side, and uh, Kalu will go over on that left hand side. So, they've got three big boys up the front now, Chelsea have. But, you know, all of a sudden, we've seen. Aaron Lennon on the ball twice, albeit... Here's Drogba, and still Didier Drogba, what a block by King. John Woodgate got turned horribly by Didier Drogba. Well, if Tottenham go on to win this, this will be as important a moment as any in the match, because that would have been a great turn there by Drogba, but Ledley King somehow came from nowhere. Lampard takes it for Chelsea, Robinson was being impeded. Well, you definitely see Drogba, he doesn't jump at him, but just walks into him and makes it difficult for Robinson to actually get the ball, so... Now we do hear from the Tottenham fans, really for the first time in the half. 
won by Mikel. Chelsea have got to go and try and win it again. No question that their morale would flag. It never does. And Elka. Malbron, the auxiliary left back, was out to him quickly. It's fed into Drogba. Promising Chelsea move. Kalou slightly overdid it, really. Lampard was getting into a good position for Chelsea. Here is Kalou. Lampard stopped by Huddleston. You just saw Lampard there taking his uh, tie-ups off his stockings. Of course, he hasn't played a lot either. Is, you know, is the pace getting a little bit to him as well now? Kalou carries the fight to Tottenham. Didier Drogba. It's a great little ball, and Elka couldn't collect it. Meanwhile, Tottenham are preparing a second change. We caught a glimpse of it. Timo Taino getting a double team talk from Gus Poyet, the assistant, and Ramos. They want to change it now, too. And Malbronk, I think, this time will be sacrificed. Why is that, Ray, do you feel? Well, Tanio can play left-back, as simple as that. Now, Tottenham have got themselves back in the game. What they don't want to do is now go and throw it away by, by Anelka, getting one against one against uh, Malbronk. So, they bring Tanio on, who can, you know, he's uh, defensive-minded, he can play at left-back, and uh, will cause Anelka more problems. So, because they've got themselves back in the game, they've just steadied themselves down a bit and make sure that back four does not concede a second goal. I think the uh, little appreciative slap on the back from Poyet told you the story, though. Malbrant's put in a good shift today. Well, he has, and I say it just as importantly, uh, because of the way Chimbonda went off, he was asked to play left-back, it's not his position, he went there and did the best he could, he could for the, the amount of time he was there. And, and uh, in that time, they got back in the game. Is this to be a fairy tale afternoon for Tottenham Hotspur after all? Berbatov to Ginas. Hutton has kept coming down this right-hand side, hasn't got much ball second half. Kalou was out to him really sharply then. He has the self-confidence though, Hutton, of a player who thinks he can make an impact this afternoon. It's beautifully set up here at Wembley. And yet another thrilling Carling League Cup final C climax beckons here. Czech got a little bit lost. Carvalho helped him out this time and gets a little bit of applause, appreciative applause from the keeper. Tottenham with extra fire now. Didn't clear Lampard when it came in from Lennon. That's disappointing again. We spoke about it before. He's got to clear that front man and give his give his players a chance to attack the ball. Belletti under this. Genus down to Lennon. 50-50, which Genus just got there ahead of Lampard. He did well, actually. No denying, it's a good spell for Tottenham, but can they find another goal? Goes out. They still have hope and plenty of it. Just at a time, great time to score because it was beginning to look like Chelsea had a real stranglehold on it. You can see the belief and the extra enthusiasm. If anything, King gave into it then, really. But the extra belief in this. Tottenham players now having been handed that, literally handed the lifeline by Wayne Bridge. And there's another fellow who can always come up with a goal in a second. Not look likely yet today, but as Ray was saying with the Chelsea goal scorers, that's often when they're most dangerous. Well, it is, but he just showed, he just literally showed a couple of minutes ago there where it got on that far right-hand side, went past Wayne Bridge like it didn't exist, delivered a ball to the back post, and it took a, a panic clearance by Belletti to actually give away a corner, but he's capable of using anybody 1v1 in tight areas you don't think he can get out of. Gives it to Lennon this time, Keane. 
Becoming more important for Tottenham now, and that's a good sign for them. Huddleston are just coming under it too much. No question he got it right. There's the hand, there's that left hand that just moves towards the ball, right in the face of the assistant referee. It's a, it's a panicky moment of defending in truth, isn't it? It was, yes. Wasn't much panicky about Berbatos slotting it. It's a great moment for Tottenham Hotspur and their fans, but will it turn into a great afternoon? Starved of success for so much of the last 20 odd years, Tottenham. Just this League Cup lifted in 1999, thanks to Alan Nielsen's goal against Leicester. Beaten in another final since by Blackburn in 2002. Huddleston forcing Terry. Too much so, actually. Approaching the last ten minutes now. Leonard did get there ahead of Belletti. Well, quiet as he was first half, Ray, he is starting to have an impact now, isn't he? Well, he's now getting the, whenever he gets the ball, he looks like he's going to create something, and therefore, you know, they've been able to get the ball out to him on this left-hand side, which they weren't able to do for whatever reason when he was on that right-hand side. You'll forgive me for saying this, but we caught a glimpse of three greats from your own era, Ray. Tottenham players Martin Peters, Pat Jennings and Alan Mallory, who featured when Tottenham were in a couple of finals in the 70s, of course. Flag has stayed down. Is this the moment for Didier Zakora and Tottenham Hotspur? What a block by Czech. Zakora has missed the second chance. And Peter Czech, no question, has saved Chelsea. I have to say, when that ball went through, I never really fancied Zakora. <laughs> I've just seen him in those situations. I mean, when it bounced there, I was hoping we'd go and leave it and let Berbatov take it on because he never moved the ball, he never moved the goalkeeper, he ran in a straight line. From a goalkeeping point of view, that's what you want somebody to do against you. You don't want them to move the ball and make you move. You just want to set yourself, stay big, and hope he hits you. Um, and he, Zakora made that, it was still a great save, but he made it easier for Czech by the way he approached the ball. And uh, I was just hoping when it bounced back it would go to Berbatov because I'm sure he would have scored the rebound. But obviously, having missed the first one, Zakora panicked, slashed at it, and didn't even hit the target. Times without number, this man has proven his worth to Chelsea. And as you say, Ray, nobody's even surprised when he pulls off a stop like that. No, that's we know. That's why he's one of the world's greatest goalkeepers. You know, they make saves which influence games, the great goalkeepers. And as you rightly said a couple of minutes ago, he's done that time and time again. And, uh, you know, at the end of this game, whether it ends in 90 minutes or whether it ends at the extra, extra time, we might be looking at... If we're looking at one or two things, maybe Ledley King's tackle a few minutes earlier, or that say which influence which way this result will go. Nonetheless, Tottenham Hotspur have had three great chances in this cup final that they've squandered. Robbie Keane, Carvalho out to him. Still Keane. Stood it up for Berbatov, who got there, and Terry got there too. Tainio! Now that would have been fairy tale stuff. Huddleston. Deflected and blocked by Terry. Chelsea hold firm. Kalou to Lampard. 
Mikel has given it away to Zuk Cora, but Essien, the Ghanaian, got there ahead of the Ivorian. Cup final watch with huge interest around the world these days, of course, with a panoply of nationalities involved. Much in the same way as the FA Cup always was. Lennon has found loads of room. There's a real purpose about Tottenham. Berbatov! And thankfully for Chelsea and Peter Cech, that came right at him. Well, a lovely move there. Lennon again coming off that left wing. Great turn, great turn by Berbatov. Strikes it with great power, but yet again that man Cech in exactly the same position. Well, I guess it's the kind of climax to this cup final that the sponsors and the organisers would hope for. 1-1 one, one between these great London rivals, Chelsea and Tottenham, approaching the last five minutes of the 90. Official attendance, 87,660, and nobody's going home. Kalou drives on for Chelsea, it was behind Essien. Tottenham fans believe there's a goal in their side, though. And the Chelsea fans haven't had a lot to cheer second half, in truth. It's been same old Chelsea, hanging on, hanging on. Frustrating. Containing. His side have made all the running, and credit to them for that. Yes, they got lucky with the goal in the sense it was a mistake. But they'll say they forced the error by pressure. Joe Coles. Actually, I was going to say been warming up. In fact, he's been warming up for the last 35 minutes. <laughs> I was going to say, knowing Joe as I do, he's probably been warming up from five minutes from the kickoff. Keep telling the boss that uh, I should be on now, I can win this game for you. He, he's looking a little bit more in earnest these days. Maybe his moment won't be long delayed. Could Chelsea win it without him? If we get a goal now, it will be a winner, won't it? Bridge, headed clear by Woodgate, only as far as Essien, no. Mikel. No free kick, one back by Berbatov. There's nothing in front of Robbie Keane. And Berbatov didn't win a free kick either. Mark Halsey's refereed this very sympathetically. Drogba! It was there for him, it was there for him. I think when this ball was delivered, Drogba just for one second thought that Paul Robinson was coming for this. Paul starts to come there, goes back, and I think it might just have just made him put a slow step in there, didn't think he could get to it, and that's why he missed it. Michael Ballack's also getting the shin pads and the boots sorted out. And in fact, it is Balak and not Joe Cole. Played in the Champions League game against Olympiakos last Tuesday night. Balak. And Michael Essien departs the scene. Well, again, Avram Grant will look at Balak and think, you know, he can win this game for us, albeit the last five minutes, you know, he, he does have quality in and around the box, can arrive in the box and score with headed goals. And uh, Essien, as good a player he is, he doesn't score many goals. But one superstar of world football is replaced by another. Huddleston got ahead to it for Tottenham. Second one was by Hutton. Dropped for Ballack. First touch for Michael Ballack, deflected on its way through, and it 
skidded and scampered past that far post to Paul Robinson. Robinson was just looking a little concerned. He might have more concern now if Chelsea can convert this corner into something. Lampard takes. Eventually it's cleared by Lennon. Mikel, Balak, instant to the back post over Hutton's head. Kalou, Hutton got something on it, Lampard came onto it. That was a good challenge by, by Jonathan Woodgate there because if there was one person you wanted to be coming onto that sort of ball, his left foot there was was Frankie Lampard and Jonathan Woodgate came out so quickly and just put enough pressure on him to make sure he couldn't get the shot on target. Three added minutes, we understand. Ramos at the touchline there, you could just maybe catch him top of your screen or a little bit of him at least, right out to the edge of his area to exhort one last effort from Tottenham. Who, as Ray says, had to play Thursday night, let's not forget that. And although it's a changed Tottenham side today, the bulk of them featured, at least for some of it, and they were involved on the match day. They weren't having a day off. Well, she, you know how she feels if it's your team in a cup final any time. But the tension might only rise if we do end up in extra time and the possibility of course of penalties no golden goal incidentally as you're probably aware confirmation of the added time <laughs> bridge Lampard, Mikel wide to Belletti and then Anelka. Huddleston, he's filled a lot of gaps well, Tom Huddleston, but he might have done better getting more distance on that. Fallers for Chelsea again. King, who's been immense for Chelsea, uh, for Tottenham today. Terry won it, Balak couldn't collect it. Tainio just got there ahead of Anelka. Matter of millimetres. But it might be one of those cup finals where tiny things decide it. Belted forward by Belletti. Flag is up. Referee Halsey acknowledges, but again allows the game to flow. How well he's done in that respect today. This time it is a foul, and it is a Tottenham free kick. And we are in injury time. It was pretty dramatic when Alan Nielsen won this trophy for Tottenham a few years ago. Dare I say this would surpass it here today. That was a scruffy goal. Tottenham would take another one now for sure. Genus to take. Chelsea had four men lined up to clear it. Thought does occur as well, Ray. You know, you look at Chelsea's defensive record in the last couple of months. Actually scoring against them is an achievement, you know. So many clean sheets have they had. Exactly, and, and you know... They've got you know, set plays, they've got so much height as well, so it's really difficult to get to, uh, chances from set plays. So, I mean, the other thing I'm just looking at there as well is, you know, Ledley King hasn't played for so long. They've got him fit for this game. Now, if Half chance now! Well, if there's one player in Tottenham Colours who you think could do it from that position, it would be Robbie Keane. Yeah, you know, Ledley King now is... Uh, 
you know, just couldn't get his foot wrapped round it there. But Ledley King, I'm watching the centre circle, is is stretching off now as though maybe his groin area, his hip area is starting to stiffen off a little bit. Um, he's done magnificent throughout this game, considering he hasn't played for so long and he's so important to this side and he showed his importance this afternoon. But I say I do worry a little bit now. We're going into extra time, how he'll cope with that. Dimitar Berbatov levels it after Didier Drogba had put Chelsea in front. At the time, you couldn't see where a goal was coming from, in all honesty, for Tottenham. They were huffing and puffing without any real penetration, but they've dragged themselves back into it. Yes, they got a slice of luck when Weybridge handled, but it's a disappointment for Chelsea that they couldn't close it out, as they were so favoured to do having got their noses in front they've been here before of course in extra time in a final it won't phase them and it won't panic them but who can deal with the extra half an hour the better Didier Drogba putting Chelsea in front he threatened a couple of times from set pieces just before the 38th minute goal and Berbatov the coolest man at Wembley when Wayne Bridge had handled to give Tottenham what they must be pleased about is actually holding Chelsea for 90 minutes because they've not done it very often right no they hadn't with you know, without without shadow of a doubt they hadn't but all of a sudden they got that boost they put a little bit of pressure on and certainly Aaron Lennon for me made a massive difference to Tottenham second half performance and they've got to continue that through this extra time if they possibly can but Chelsea will be will be kicking themselves because they get 1-0 up and they are so confident of their ability they don't push on to get the second goal they just sit there keep it frustrate you as I've said two or three times and eventually you know a side will get a break against you Ray thank you very much indeed we'll pause for just a moment or two at Wembley Stadium but please don't go anywhere Rejoin us for extra time. Tottenham Hotspur won, Chelsea won in this Carling League Cup final after 90 minutes.
Paul Dempsey going in 10. Welcome back once more, everyone, to New Wembley. 30 minutes between a outright winner of the Carling League Cup this season and a penalty shootout to decide it. It's as we started today with Tottenham from left to right. And they made good headway, didn't they, early on when they were attacking the end away to our right. Carlo Curicini is also warming up right. Ch Chelsea have incidentally used two of three subs. It would be an interesting one, that, of course. Um, Pinochet, over the season, has had a couple of groin injuries which have curtailed him. Now, whether he's uh, aggravated that or, or whether that blow in the face has given him a little bit of double vision, because that could have happened as well. Belletti brushed aside by Lennon. Chelsea free kick. We're getting word from the touchline, incidentally, right, uh, as ever spot on, and having been there yourself, who would be better placed to comment? But Czech says he is suffering from a little bit of double vision. Well, he did catch that shot smack in the face, and, um, you know, it did take him a little while to get sorted out. So, um, you know, maybe he's still feeling a little bit woozy and uh, not seeing everything in a clear light. And, of course, if you're a goalkeeper, that's a problem. So um, that would be a blow to Alvin Grant because, you know, he's only got the one substitute left. And he wouldn't really want to be using it on uh, on a goalkeeper when he's got people like Frank Lampard and John Terry and other people out there who maybe uh, are struggling a little bit themselves. Woodgate standing firm against Didier Drogba as Tottenham under Ramos have stood firm today against Avram Grant at Chelsea so far. Helped on by Berbatov. It's reached Lennon. Cleared by Carvalho up into what is now a glowering evening sky in North London. It was a beautiful morning, spring-like, sunny, warm. But it's clouded over as the day's gone on. And with the roof open here at Wembley, we can see up into what's beginning to look like a early evening sky. All the lights are on. It's a splendid scene. Can't say that all the football today has matched the occasion, but it's been a gripping struggle nonetheless, and it's by no means sorted out yet. And we just saw why Anelka doesn't track back very often because his tackling skills are a little bit wanting. You know, there's Lennon again, look, get his head up to run at people, and I'll be surprised if Czech is okay that they don't bring Joe Cole on at some stage because he can turn a game and he can inject a little bit of something different into Chelsea's side which, which basically at the moment they don't have a free kick and a penalty so far have been the routes to goal Gina's with this free kick for Tottenham Woodgate it drops in and Tottenham Hotspur go in front and Jonathan Woodgate in one of his first ever games for Tottenham Hotspur. Can you believe it? It's fairy tale stuff. And Tottenham have turned it round and lead in extra time. Well, Finchek will be disappointed with himself, but to be fair, Genesis has delivered a couple of good balls in during the game. Uh, we've been commenting on the lack of quality from crosses from Tottenham, but this ball's whipped in there. Check comes for it. Certainly Drogba thinks Czech's going to get it, but he just gets the slightest of nicks here, Jonathan, just in front of Peter Czech, and there we see it nestling. No real power, but does it matter? It doesn't matter in a cup final. That's in the back of the net. Drogba leaves it for Czech. Czech just gets ahead of him. I mean, it's a little one-two off the keeper. Woodgate, Czech, Woodgate, 2-1. What a time to score your first goal for your new club. Chelsea led for so long, now they trail. And they trail to Tottenham Hotspur. And not many commentators over the last 20 years have had to say that in any game, in any competition.
Bridge, Drogba, couldn't get on it. Well, I don't think he can quite believe it. Wasn't in his contract, was it? Score the winner at Wembley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's nothing in his contract about scoring goals. There might be that. Never mind one at Wembley. But I think he might just remember it if it continues to finish like this. I'll say. And so will everybody who supports Tottenham. Normally Chelsea are so good at hanging on to a lead and closing it out. But the other thing they're great at is never giving in. They'll come at Tottenham all right. And as, as Ray has said, they do have Joe Cole to come on if needed. Can Tottenham hang on? If anything, late in the 90 minutes, Tottenham were starting to look the tireder side. Clear free kick. And Genius is hurt, I think. That's a card too. For Mikel. I mean, there's no attempt to try and play the ball. He just stepped right into him and quite rightly gets booked for it. Unfortunately, it looks like Genesis has actually sustained a little bit of an injury there because the players are waving for the physio to come on. It only comes now. I'm not sure we can't see what's happening with him down there for all the players that are surrounding, but certainly there is, uh, there is some concern from the rest of the Tottenham players about Genesis's injury. Here's another look at the goal, right? Well, maybe it could go the wrong side of the post, couldn't it? Even when it's coming back off the goalkeeper, maybe it's to be his day. Well, in a cup final, no matter how well you play, you need a little, you need a little bit of luck, and certainly, and certainly, you know, Woodgate had that, but. The, the Tottenham supporters to our left-hand side, they're not worried about that. Woodgate's not worried about that, because if it stays like this at the end of extra time, then he'll go in the record books for Tottenham as being the man who won the Carling Cup final at the first time at Wembley. I wonder if it's also a record that a man gets a winning goal in a cup final at Wembley, having, and we have checked, never having scored for two and a half years. Last one was for Real Madrid in his brief spell in Spain. <laughs> There'll be a pub question in the years to come. Belt and braces football from Tainio. It's up to Chelsea now to find the spark of inspiration. Mikel, Drogba on the run. King thought about it, left it, but it was the right decision. Well, I can't remember too many wrong decisions he's made all the trip. He has been absolutely magnificent. So, Joe Cole's coming on. It doesn't surprise me because. They need a spark, and this little fella does have the ability to inject some pace into the game as a trick, will run at people, and if ever they needed Joe Cole to come on and, and turn things, then it is now. Obi Mikel is going to make way. Certainly has his strengths but the creative edge must be with Cole what a reception he gets from the Chelsea fans would have been feeling pretty down surely when the team was read out at the team meeting not to be in the starting 11 could yet be the hero for them It's the first time that Chelsea have conceded two goals in any game, admittedly this going into extra time, not just the 90 minutes, since a 4-4 draw on Boxing Day, the 26th of December, against Aston Villa, and that in itself was such a one-off. Bridge. Kalou has won a free kick. There's any doubt about that, and certainly no Tottenham are going to believe and not give silly free kicks. It cost them in the first half. They gave three or four silly free kicks away central, and one finish in the back of the net. What they mustn't do now is start giving them again.
Lampard takes. Gone the direct route, and Robinson was very alert and across his line. Frank Lampard was very clever there because the way the wall was set up, that space was there to hit it in, and I think he anticipated that maybe Robinson would move to his left thinking about the cross, but he hit it into the space, and thankfully Robinson was aware of it. Lampard again. The all-important touch was by a Tottenham head. We've caught a glimpse there of Yunus Kabul getting ready to come on for Tottenham. Zakora. Robbie Keane found space. Charges on, he might catch this. Taino's header. This Tottenham change won't be long delayed here, I don't think. Yunus Kabul. Gus Poyet signalling that he's ready. No mixed feelings for Poyet today, having played for Chelsea before joining Tottenham. He's Tottenham through and through these days with Van der Ramos, and it's Robbie Keane, would you believe? Would you believe, Ray? Well, to be fair, he's run himself into the ground. You know, he really has given all for, for the club. That's a certainty. And they're now in this situation now with what, three or four minutes to go to the end of the first period of extra time. It'll be interesting now to see whether he actually goes with three at the back, bringing Kapoor on, or whether he just has two holding midfield players sat in front of the back four. But certainly Ramos seems to have decided, I can't see where Chelsea can score against us unless we make silly errors. So let's put up two banks of four and make it really difficult for them. Woodgate climbed through the crowd to make it his. No question that Chelsea have got enough game-breaking players out there to get a goal from one of them. Drogba, Balak, Joe Cole, Anelka, the list goes on and on. That's a Tottenham free kick, though, and there's a card, too, for Carvalho. Again, the Spurs physios about to be called on here. There will be some tired legs out there, that's an absolute certainty, because that pitch has cut up a little bit, it's looked a little bit heavy. Uh, we've seen players slipping around and... Uh, you know, you've seen one or two people, one or two of the players already stretching themselves, so certainly there'll be some tired players out there and tired legs. And uh, as I say, there's, there's a number of players out there who haven't been playing week in, week out, so that's going to be a drain on them as well. We're going to have a couple of minutes of stoppage time at the end of this first period of extra time. As a result, Sakura's hobbling away and will rejoin the fray, I think. Can they see it through Tottenham Hotspur? Against the odds. Woodgate seems to be saying five at the back. Yeah, they've put Ledley King in the middle, Kabul on the left, Jonathan uh, Woodgate on the right. Uh, two full-backs are the same. And they're just going to keep uh, Tom Huddleston sat in front of those, those three at the back as well. So they're very much saying you're not going to play through the middle of us. If you've got any chance of getting at us, you're going to have to go around the outside. And we're not sure you're good enough to do that against us. Has Genus got anything left to give? Moving well enough here. Taking on Bridge. 
Certainly a player growing into his Tottenham career now in the way that they hoped when they bought him. Well, at this stage of the game, that's an excellent run. Taking the, put, taking the team up the other end of the pitch. A couple of minutes to go before the end of the first period. They can keep it down this end now. And that's exactly what Ramos will want with them. Carvalho got his head to it. Manelka and Drogba up in tandem for Chelsea. Joe Cole. Valletti spreads it wide to Cole once more, wanting to get on the ball, wanting to make something happen for Chelsea. Lennon did a good job holding him up. Tottenham encamped across their penalty area. It's all they've got to do now. Roll reversal, really. Still Joe Cole. Ambitious in the end. Just what Robinson wanted, really. Yep, I think he can take those sort of shots with his eyes closed, so that's really his... Lennon just sends Chelsea back again. Well, they seem to know what's asked of them, at least, Tottenham, Ray, since the rigid. Well, well, they do, yeah. As I say, they've got the five at the back and they've got four in front. Kalou almost, almost got in behind Hutton, but not quite. I think he felt that in the calf area. Yeah, probably a little bit of tiredness again, a little bit of cramp coming into Hutton as well. And although he's, you know, he's played a lot of top-class football in Scotland, he's never been involved in anything like this before. Anelka. So many blue shirts in the penalty area. Balak. Is this the moment for Chelsea? No, Hutton got to it. And Lennon belts it out. Injury time at the end of the first half of extra time. Aimed at Drogba this time. Again, Tottenham repulsed the threat from Chelsea. They could do with a breather here, Spurs. Exhorting referee Halsey to blow his whistle. And he obliges. And they're halfway there in extra time. They've won the first period thanks to this fella, John Woodgate. And an unlikely goal-scoring hero he most certainly is. But with that, the plot thickens again here at Wembley. Nobody's going to pretend it's been a great game, but it's been a fascinating and compelling struggle. And Tottenham have turned it round. We're hearing that Gus Poyet, who's in truth never been a man to fight shy of an expressing an opinion, has had words all day with the fourth official and now in turn the officials have told him in no uncertain terms that they've had enough anymore and he won't get to see Tottenham lift the trophy. <laughs> That's if they do it. <laughs> well, there's a long 15 minutes in front of Tottenham. The one worrying thing just seeing that last five minutes is that Obviously, Ramos has made his mind up. We're going to defend against them. We're not going to give them opportunities. But they've sank deeper and deeper. And if you, and this last couple of minutes, they've just belted up the field to nobody. And it's really difficult when you're tired to keep doing that time and time again. You need to have a release. You need to have somebody you can get the ball to, hold it up, and give your defence a little bit of respite. So I hope Tottenham don't just sink and sink and sit on their 18-yard box for its next 15 minutes and think that Chelsea won't get a chance. They have to break out as well. As difficult as that is, they need to release the pressure and get up the field at some stage during this 15 minutes. So... Uh, Thank you, Ray. It's a very quick turnaround today by referee Halsey. And uh, we're almost all set to resume already. Can they keep it going, Tottenham? What a, an extraordinary turnaround it would mark in the career of John Woodgate. He's been excellent all day, of course, and we've always known about his quality, but his career more than once has seemed to be going off the rails. But he could end up being the hero, at least of one part of London tonight.
Chelsea have 15 minutes to force their way back into it. Here we go. Tottenham drop off right from the off. Inviting Chelsea to have a go at them. Mikel, excuse me, uh, Kalu, of course. Mikel off. We might be in for 15 minutes of this, you know. Tottenham sitting on the edge of their penalty yeah. area and t Chelsea probing and probing. Taken by Bridge. Robinson's come for it. Corner. Balak scampers away to get the ball back quickly. Well, I don't think he got great contact on it, but he got enough contact on it to uh, get it out for a corner. But uh, if they're going to sit back and just soak up this pressure, they're going to need Paul Robinson to try and come and take a couple of crosses to break up the pressure. Joe Cole couldn't quite get over it. Ironically, we heard from Cole after the Olympiacos game of the Champions League midweek, right? Frustrated by Chelsea's inability to score more than one goal in a game. Or in, or in that case, obviously not score at all. But yeah. I think you know. I think you're right there. At, um, you know, because they they do rely totally on getting in front, and then they've got enough confidence in the side to stay there. The problem is, as has happened today, if somebody gets a goal back against them, it's lifting themselves to go again. Carvalho has gifted it to Berbatov, and Tottenham are in opposition territory for the first time since the break. Not for long. Drogba penalised. Yeah, I think as the ball was played up there, he just pushed Jonathan Woodgate aside, and, uh, and we've never seen that uh, Drogba admit to any foul, have we? But uh, I think on that occasion <laughs> it was, and Mark Halsey was uh, very aware of it. Berbatov, Carvalho got a toe in, so too did Belletti, but Lennon was sharply back at him, gets a rapturous hand from the Tottenham crowd, who've waited so long for a glory, glory day, the sort that Tottenham Hotspur as a club was built on in every decade, of course. But Chelsea will keep coming, and Elk is coming here at King. Woodgate got it back where it came from. Genus gave chase out into the corner very quickly. Break of the ball favoured Tottenham on the edge of the box. That's all Tottenham need from here on in. Belletti to Joe Cole. Tainio got tight to him, did well. In by Carvalho this time. Held up by Drogba. Well, they could have injured each other, Balak and Drogba. That Drogba has been slightly inconvenienced by it. Kalou couldn't get the cross through. Lampard. Thought about it, I think, from distance. Thought better of it. Offside. Advantage played again by Halsey. And in fact, he now comes back. I think it was because Tottenham gave the ball away subsequently. Yes, I mean, obviously, when the, the Lions have put his flag up, Tottenham finished up with possession. Definitely, the two, you know, there's two players offside there. Tottenham I just have to interrupt you, there. Ray, because of all the confusion going on. 
the latest understanding we had on this rule which has been amended adapted di interpreted di the referee or linesman has to wait until the player receives the ball correct he didn't do that then no help it, no <laughs> he didn't no but uh, certainly because of the panic clearance it's put chelsea back in possession of the ball and uh, that's why they've given it thank you for the clap i knew you'd know the rule inside out <laughs> More breathing space for Tottenham. Well, this will suit Tottenham down to the ground. The more the game can be broken up in this last 15 minutes, the easier it's going to be, because what they don't want Chelsea to do is build up a momentum, pin them back in that box, and at some stage they get a bad bounce and Chelsea will get that chance. In your own career, Ray, you must have played, and heroically on occasion, played in big cup finals, extra time games. Is the mental tiredness as much of a question mark is the physical it is without a shadow of a doubt Drogba still Drogba what a block by King Carvalho just got there ahead of Lennon and who's got the nerve for it today Tottenham's nerve seem to be holding so far Woodgate had Drogba around the chest it's another penalty I think no he's given offside he's given offside against Drogba but Woodgate had drop it in an arm wrestle well i'll tell you it's lucky he was offside because when i saw the linesman's flat he is offside there's drop was the ball good decision by the linesman when the ball was delivered in woodgate is all over drop with that as the linesman's flat went up initially i thought that's going to be another penalty he just wraps himself there. around it lifts him off his feet but thankfully he's in an offside position before it was delivered Are the little things stacking up in Tottenham's favour here? Chelsea don't do luck, they don't do good and bad fortune, they just grind on remorselessly and generally get the job done. Trouble is they're running out of time on this occasion. Balak gets another throw. Bridge gives it back to the German superstar. And Elke. Kalou, still brilliant. What a stop by Robinson. Fantastic work. But Chelsea come in a blue tide unceasingly. Joe Cole, and still belted away this time by Kabul. Well, that's a vital save. It might have been with his feet, but it doesn't matter how you do it. Carvalho. It's breathless at Wembley. And it's all Chelsea. Carvalho again. And still, I think he's blown against Carvalho. People are standing all around the ground. Well, this is a vital save. He makes space for himself, and it's so close to Robinson's body, he can't get his hands down, but he manages to get his right foot and get a block on it there. And that really is a vital save. And that's great news, great news for him, because that will give him a fabulous boost to his confidence. And the management who decided to bring him back in midweek after Radic Cherny had played in all of the last ten games before that for Tottenham. Lennon. Huddleston has a little dart and takes out Peter Cech. To his credit, the keeper wants to make nothing of it. Woodgate, fantastic in the air today. Given away by Huddleston. Tottenham could have done with him holding on to it there, I think. Bridge charges on. Kalu Overran it slightly. Lampard couldn't help him out. Lennon. This time they do reach a teammate with it, and it's Berbatov who can hold on to it. Trying to link again with Lennon. Of course, if Tottenham get one more, it's all over, surely. And it might help their cause here later on that they do have the odd little breakout with the likes of Lennon. Well, that's why they're, they're leaving him up the field. To, I mean, Berbatov is on his last legs there. He's up the front, his stockings are starting to come down and everything. 
and Lennon's just playing off him now and uh, certainly if they can get the ball to him yes he no he still looks like he's got the legs to run the Chelsea back four just five minutes for Tottenham to hold on he's gonna give a yellow card here to Timo Tainio for time wasting I think to be fair, to start off with, there was nobody in front of him. He could throw the ball to them. They're all so tired. I mean, it's a fair job, though. He's doing his side no good whatsoever. It's and quite it? happy to have a discussion because it's wasting time. So Chelsea are wasting their own time. I think we can reliably say that he will let, add the time on referee holds it. He certainly did in the first period of extra time. Belletti takes for Chelsea. That was a hit and hope ball, really, nothing more than that. Chelsea need better. That time it was Steve Clark, the Chelsea assistant, to rescue the ball at the touchline. King got something on it. Joe Cole! And it's another big save by Robinson. I don't think Joe Cole quite got hold of it, but how many more good chances will Chelsea get now? No, he definitely didn't make great contact with this. Ledley King's probably his first mistake. Drops down to Joe Cole, doesn't strike it cleanly, but it still took a good save from Robinson low to his left-hand side there. They've had two great opportunities, Chelsea denied by Robinson. It's Tottenham Hotspur's name on this trophy this season. It's Juan de Ramos about to do it yet again in a cup competition. Only this time even quicker than he managed to do it in Spanish football. Kalu. Broken up. It's two on two at the other end suddenly. All it needed was a better ball to Leonard. I mean, it's so disappointing for Zagora because he's been fantastic in everything else he's done today, but just his passing at times lets him down and lets the team down. They've just had such a great opportunity to finish the game off there. Actually, it's the second he's had, right? Remember him one-on-one -on -one with Czech earlier? Yeah. Joe Cole, brilliant from Cole. And Kabul, it was this time, who stood firm. They've done everything you might have expected of Chelsea, bar putting the ball in the net, which is the only bit that counts in this last period of extra time. No time to lose now for Lampard. Drogba. Another chance for Lampard to cross it, perhaps. Everybody's in that penalty area. That was a tired cross by Lampard. Only understandable. Tottenham. Watch the time dripping out of the hourglass, but it's not going quickly enough for them. Bridge. Kabul again got his head to it. Peter checks halfway to the touchline. Bridge didn't risk trying to pass it to him. He went the long way round, but it was the right decision. It's like a training ground routine now. Everybody camped in and around the goal. We're in the last minute of the 30. They're going to play three added minutes here on, on top of it. Chelsea have won one corner after another. It's when you see them like this, though, you think, why don't they play like this when they're 1-0 up and they can kill a game off? But they haven't done. Through everybody to Joe Cole. Belletti, wild. 20 rows back into the Chelsea end and they'll throw the ball out quickly but Tottenham will take a breather he had it in his grasp Avram Grant today has he been foiled by this master 
of Cup football, Ramos. They're all waving the flags at the Tottenham end. Robinson can almost afford a smile. I'm not sure he realises there's three more minutes to go here. He'll know now. Tottenham have possession. And they've got at least one hand on the cup. fighting to get the ball back. And I think it's a yellow card now for Lennon as well. waiting for the whistle, which comes now, will it come for Chelsea now? Berbatov climbed with Drogba, and the referee who was right there said Berbatov was the last player to touch it. He's got to stop arguing, he's got to concentrate and pick it up, whatever his responsibility is here. Can Chelsea save themselves? Robinson has missed it, the whistle's gone. Tottenham free kick. Well, it's all down to the referee now. He's come up with a couple of very big saves, Paul Robinson. Deep in injury, in extra time here. And are they enough to see Tottenham to victory? You well, know, the Tottenham supporters certainly believe it. To our left-hand side and to our right-hand side, the Chelsea supporters are leaving, so they feel that's it. Robbie Keane imploring the referee from the touchline. Blow your whistle. Genus has it for Spurs and goes to the corner, good work, even better. Yeah, excellent, just what your manager wants at this stage. He's been good today, hasn't he? He's kept going, he's got tremendous energy levels, he really has, it might not have been his most impressive game, but certainly in terms of his work rate and what he's done for the team has been fantastic. It's a special scene for a Tottenham Hotspur fan, I can tell you at Wembley. And they've waited a long, long time to enjoy it. They think the cup is theirs. I think Genesis is going to be booked as well now, kicking the ball away. Is there any way now that Chelsea can break their hearts? The yellow is for Genus, quite right, right. I don't think it'll get a mention on the way home if Tottenham have got the cup on the bus with them. Sakura, he'll belt it, won't he? Yeah. You just sense that Chelsea think it's all up now, even oh, they. You can't, you can't see them getting back at it now. They've, they've had their chances. Robbins has made a couple of saves. They've missed a couple of chances. And to be fair, the defence has been superb. Is the time? The whistle has gone. It won't count even if it goes in because Mark Halsey has called it to an end. And Tottenham Hotspur have come from behind to beat Chelsea and lift the Carling League Cup. It was no great game, but it is the most dramatic comeback by Spurs. And who knows, it might signify a much bigger comeback for the club. And for so long today, it looked like Chelsea's day. From the moment that Didier Drogba, from a set piece admittedly, found the way through for Chelsea to put them in front. And Chelsea never, never squander a lead when they get in front today. Well, today it happened. It took Tottenham an awfully long time, but when Wayne Bridge handled, Berbatov held his nerve. And then John Woodgate, in extra time, the most unlikely goal scoring hero imaginable. But he is the man who has created these scenes of joy for Tottenham, their players, the support here in the stadium at Wembley, and all the many more watching with us around the world, who began 
to lose faith that Tottenham would ever be back at the top table in English football. Yes! All the extra training that this man Ramos is alleged to have put into the routine at Spurs may have paid off because they did keep going right to the very end of extra time. Robbie Keane wasn't on the field when the final whistle blew, but what a contribution from him and they, how they love him. And how long he has waited to win a major medal in his career in English football. No, it's fantastic scenes down there, it, it really is. And, uh, you know, they've worked hard. Ramos has gelled them into a really strong group and they've believed in themselves and they've just kept defending and defending and keeping the shape and getting bodies in the way, and of course, at important times, Paul Robinson made a couple of very, very good saves. But for me, the, you know, the two best players for Spurs, I thought Woodgate and Ledley King were enormous all afternoon, all afternoon. And of course, Woodgate had the added bonus of scoring the winning goal, something he'll never forget for the rest of his life. There's a special scene for the Tottenham players because from where they were at the, after the first two or three months of the season, to be coming to Wembley for the first time in the Carling Cup final and to walk out of here with a trophy, uh, it's special for them. And it's special for this for this club as well in, uh, in their anniversary season as well. Absolutely right. And so many of the greats of former years are with us in the crowd this afternoon at Wembley. We saw a few of them, the likes of Chivers and Mullery and Peters, Pat Jennings. They know what it's like to win trophies as Tottenham players. And now maybe a new generation is going to get the taste for it too. And so many of these Tottenham players, unlike the Chelsea players on your screen now, don't know what it's like before today. It's been the Chelsea mob who've been hoovering up the medals so often in English football. And for most of these Tottenham players, it's a whole new experience to be the winner on a big day. And what must it mean to them? Well, John Terry and Frank Lampard brought back into the Chelsea lineup today how hard they've had to fight to get here and how disappointing it is for them to be the players going up first which means you are the loser on a day like this to receive a memento which in truth won't mean much to a team of natural born winners like Chelsea but away they go as Tottenham celebrate and there aren't many Chelsea fans left in the ground to share this moment with them they've got many other Objective still this season, of course. The Champions League, perhaps paramount. Who would dare write them out of the Premier League title race, although they have ground to make up. And they are in the FA Cup quarter-final. And they'll fancy ending the season at Wembley with a smile or two, no doubt. But it's bitter disappointment. As ever, the team selection will be questioned whether Avram Grant got it right or wrong, but the simple truth is if they win, he's got it right, and if they don't win, he's got it wrong, essentially. But they do have to find a way, surely, of finding another goal or two in the big games that remain this season. 202 steps up to the top, and it feels a lot longer, surely. Yeah, I, think, uh, I think when you've lost, it probably seems double that. Um, and certainly for the likes of John Terry and Frank Lampard, they're, they're not used to walking up any sort of steps as losers. So it'll be a, it's a big blow to them, but knowing the character of, of those two and the rest of the team, I'm sure that it will drive them on to, to really make strides. Maybe the championship is maybe still a little bit out of their grasp at the moment, but certainly the Champions League and of course with so many of the Premiership sides being out of the FA Cup as well, they will really think they've got a chance in that as well. Well, it'll certainly be a subdued Chelsea party that travels back across London this evening and the smiles are all on Tottenham faces. And the stage belongs to them too. Jonathan Woodgate nominated as man of the match ahead of even King and one or two of his fellow defenders. Well, that's pro he's probably swayed it with him scoring the winning goal, I would think. But certainly, for me, Ledley King and him were the two best players for Spurs. I thought they were magnificent throughout. You know, Drogba can be a problem at any stage to you. They also had to deal with Anelka at times, you know. So they dealt with everything that came in the box. I only remember 
Ledley King making one mistake, and thank you, Paul Robinson pulled him out of that one. But apart from that, considering he's hardly played this year, they've, they've spent probably six weeks trying to get him ready for this game. It's paid off for the club, they've finished up with the trophy. Um, he looked at times, uh, say, towards the end of the game that he was really struggling, and that's maybe why Ramos brought on Kabul to make sure they had three at the back to try and give him a little bit of extra help. But it all worked out for Ramos. What a start for him with his Tottenham career. And uh, there's the lad. He's managed to walk those children two steps, but he looks to be a little bit to get there. And Robbie Keane did say while King was out of the side, if it is to be Tottenham's day, one way or another, it will be Ledley King who will receive the trophy. But how much better for him that he's played such a big part in it for his side today. The 2008 Carling League Cup winners are Tottenham Hotspur. Cue the fireworks, cue the noise, and cue the Tottenham celebrations. The road started against Middlesbrough. It took in Blackpool in round four. Manchester City in the quarter-finals and sweeter than sweet a two-legged victory over Arsenal in the semi-final before putting it over on their other great London rival on the biggest day of all Jonathan Woodgate we think you know it was his first goal anywhere in English football since his Leeds career and uh, of course he did score against Chelsea when he was a Leeds player and it was, it was, a, I mean, it was a special goal. It's not very often time you can play a one-two against Peter Cech, the keeper, and finish off the back of the net. But as I said, mentioned in commentary, you need a little bit of luck to win cups. And as well as Tottenham did, they just had that little bit of luck at the right time. And there they are, showing that trophy off. And they deserve it, and that is fantastic. The Ramos revolution, new faces and the players that he believes could take Tottenham Hotspur forward as a club. They last won the FA Cup back here in 1990-91, but this man has the magic touch, no question. UEFA Cups in successive years, the Spanish Cup last season at Sevilla too. But it's been a long wait for these Tottenham fans. They last listed the League Cup in 98-99. And it's been years of turmoil, frustration and disappointment. Maybe now Tottenham Hotspur are on their way back to join the elite. Truly be one of the big clubs, which is what they always were when Ray played there after his Liverpool career in the 80s, in the 70s, most certainly the 60s and 50s too. That's what Tottenham Hotspur as a club's built on. And that's where these boys want to take them back to. And you sense this evening as though they've made that first step by going up the steps of Wembley and coming back down as the winners. Well, Tottenham Hotspur fans will certainly remember this occasion. We hope very much you've enjoyed it with us today here at Wembley. As I said before, I don't think it's going to be remembered as one of the classic finals. But it was a gripping struggle and any team that overcomes Chelsea deserves maximum praise, however they choose to do it. And nonetheless, it certainly, most certainly, is a momentous moment in the history of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. And who knows, it might really come to be the moment when the Ramos revolution took over. My thanks particularly to Ray Clements, as ever, a pleasure, Ray. Wherever you've joined us from in the world today, thank you very much for watching. We hope Tottenham is your team and therefore it's been a great day for you. Commiserations if it's Chelsea. Certainly Chelsea will be back, that is for sure. But this is Tottenham's night in North London. Tottenham Hotspur have won the Carnegie League Cup in extra time. Tottenham Hotspur 2, Chelsea 1.